Welcome to the Minnesota Twins franchise on MLB The Show 17. We are here in the month of July in Season 2, and the Twins are 8 games above 500, closing in on their win total from a season ago. The pitching has been above average all season, and the hitting is beginning to turn around with standouts such as Yunel Escobar and the improved play of Miguel Sano. The Twins are still just outside of first place in the AL Central, but are in the midst of the wild card chase as we jump into an interleague series, the Twins and the St. Louis Cardinals in St. Louis for a couple games and then back at home for a couple. It's Alex Reyes versus Steven Gonzalez, and the ERA for Reyes pretty high at 5.4. We jump into the first inning and this is Miguel Sano with the average up to 252 and leading the team with 22 home runs. First pitch, deep to right, make it 23 home runs. Miguel Sano puts the Twins out in front. Fastball right down the middle, and Miguel Sano hits it squarely into the right center bullpen, 398 feet from home plate. We saw this happen in the last episode with a fast start off a Daniel Palka home run. Now, I read a comment on last video that made some sense to have Miguel Sano hit two. So that means Yunel Escobar is hitting three. He's going high and hard to left center field, but not the same carry as I originally thought it had. So a 1-0 lead given to Steven Gonzalez, who has been a great surprise for the team this year. We needed these young pitchers to step up, and Gonzalez has maybe more than any. As Gonzalez opens his day here with a strikeout on that slider, then against Dexter Fowler, this will bloop down in front of Byron Buxton. And that's in for a base hit. One down in the first, and taking off is Fowler, as Escobar can't get a handle on it, but I'm not sure it would have mattered. Matt Carpenter, two and two, slider gets him on the inside corner. Gonzalez doesn't have the most electric fastball, so that slider is very big to get strikeouts. High and hard drive here to center field, and this will be caught by Byron Buxton on the warning track. So a 1-0 game as we continue on. Into the second, this is Joe Maurer taking some pitches here. Reyes used a lot of pitches early in the game. Ripped to right by Maurer, but right at the right fielder and hauled in with ease. I'm still figuring out how I want this middle of the order to go. It's kind of a week by week, game by game kind of deal. Here's a base hit for St. Louis as they get a single off Gonzalez. Here's the next batter on a 1-2 count, and he went around on that slider. Gonzalez had that pitch working for him early. With two down, slider just off the outside corner. Gonzalez is averaging a little over three walks per nine innings, and this time he does lose the batter and walks him. To a board for St. Louis, and there's that slider again getting the swinging strike, and then finishing him off with the knuckle curveball. Gonzalez gets another strikeout. Into the third now, Gonzalez, it's time to hit. 3 2 pitch, and how about that? A walk to a pitcher. As Gonzalez takes his place at first base, now Brandon Phillips, a pitch away, taken to right field, and the Twins get to a board for Miguel Sano. 0-1 pitch, Sano pops up a pitch up and in, and that is an infield fly. That takes us to Yunel Escobar, underneath a fastball above the zone, takes a couple bad strikes and then looks at a pitch he should have swung at. Strike three to close out the inning for Reyes. Bottom three, Gonzalez. Ground ball to the right side, and Phillips has some trouble with it. And this goes in the books as an error as Aledmus Diaz reaches first. Dexter Fowler the next up, a full count, and he waves at a fastball just off the outside corner. Here is Matt Carpenter. Ground ball up the middle to Escobar, to Phillips, and back to first base, and the Twins turn two. One thing we've done very well this year is turn double plays and play solid defense behind our pitchers. In the fourth, Joe Maurer up again, who had a laser line drive into right last time. Takes a few pitches here, again working the count as Joe Maurer does, and he ends up taking a walk to first base. Here is Buxton, who has stayed down in the order since he's been recalled from AAA, waiting for him to start hitting better again. At least here he's able to draw a walk, putting two aboard for Jason Castro. 
following off a change up away castro two and two and staying in the at bats another 2-2 pitch castro in front of the change up and the twins leave a couple more on base bottom four Gonzalez still pretty solid as he hits that slider again on the bottom of the zone and gets a strikeout this time using that circle changeup. Two down for the Cardinals and Colton Wong with a fastball in there. He falls behind. Slider upstairs this time is looked at for strike three. This was the seventh strikeout for Steven Gonzalez. Then he goes in the batter's box and laces a single to left field. His hitting ratings are super low, so that was shocking to me. Miguel Sano up here with one down. Breaking pitch over the middle, and Sano gone to deep left field. A two-home run day for the Twins power hitter. Number 24 on the season as Sano hopes to hit 30 home runs. RBIs are still a bit lower than you'd expect, but if there's no one on base, he can't drive them in. I think Reyes made his two worst pitches against the worst player to make those pitches against. A curveball and a fastball right over the heart of the plate, and Sano does not miss. 3-0 Twins, Yunel Escobar, he'll get into the fun base hit to right field as he continues to swing the bat very well. That'll take Reyes out of the game as St. Louis has to go to their bullpen a bit before they'd like to as Mike Leak enters. And he gets a change up on the outside corner, says the umpire. So Maurer with two strikes, lace to right and down for a hit, it's extra bases. This time Maurer is in with a double and here comes Escobar rounding third. Ahead of the throw, a bit off the line and safe. 4 nothing Minnesota. Gonzalez continuing, speared at first by Joe Maurer. That's an out. At 56 pitches, I was feeling very good about Gonzalez at this point to go deep into the ball game as he gets strikeout number eight. With two down, looking to finish the inning, but not so fast. Just past the gloves of Sano and Escobar, it sneaks through. That's Diaz up now, and he gets a base hit through the middle. Suddenly, the Cardinals have something going with two outs. It's Dexter Fowler's turn. Fastball in there, one and one. Fowler lifted to right and down for extra bases. This goes as a double for Fowler. One run scores. Here comes the second, and the Twins will not get this in time. 4-2 as the Cardinals cut the lead in half. To finish off the inning, Gonzalez puts a slider on the corner, and with an 0-2 ground ball to Sano, the Twins do get out of the fifth inning. Let's go bottom six now with Gonzalez. When he had two outs in the fifth, I felt like he'd go very deep into this game, but quickly, the play trailed off. The Cardinals had those three straight hits, and then the control was a little more of a concern. Here's a fly ball caught by Palka. Two down now for the Cardinals, and a ground ball again to Miguel Sano. And that would do it for the day for Steven Gonzalez. Six solid innings, allowing just two runs. So in the seventh, with a couple outs, we have Daniel Palka taking one off the knee. He's all right, he goes to first base. Joe Maurer swinging the bat well today. He'll go to center, and that gets down for a base hit. We had a couple two-out rallies in this game. Twins trying to get that lead increased again. Here's Buxton up the middle, played at second base, and the out is recorded, and the Twins keep it just a 4-2 game. Bottom seven now, we have Tom Wilhelmson in the game, and against the shift coming off the bench, that's a great hit by Matt Adams. Two down for Ledmus Diaz, fastball fouled off. One and one, fouled away as Diaz falls behind. Two and two, he looks at a fastball at 97 miles per hour. That's another Cardinal strikeout. In the eighth inning, we bring Kenny Vargas off the bench. He'll fly to deep right field, but that stays in the yard. Let's go bottom eight now as the Twins still lead by two. Now in the game, Buddy Bo Shears trying to set up Glenn Perkins. Dexter Fowler, two and one, waves at the sinker. Two and two from Bo Shears, right on the outside corner with the heat. I've been looking for that end of our bullpen to improve, both Bo Shears and Perkins. 
So this was a big outing for Bo Shears. One and two, and that is a soft tapper to Sano. He'll race in, good sidearm, throw to first base. Twins get out of the eighth, and on to the ninth we go. Insurance runs? Not on this swing. Miguel Sano strikes out. And now it's time for Glenn Perkins. 30 saves on the year among the leaders in the American League. Facing Randall Gritchick leading off. There's a fastball that Perkins gets ahead with. And then he goes to the slider at the knees. One down for Glenn Perkins. Next is the second baseman, Colton Wong. Fastball, no call there for Perkins. Rarely do we see him get a 1-2-3 save, it feels. And this will not be one to break the trend as he walks Wong. That brings up Harrison Bader. He'll fly to left field, but that is no problem for Rosario as the Twins get the second out. And that means this game is up to Eric Fryer hitting just over 200 on the season. And he waves wildly at the slider as the Twins cement the victory in St. Louis. Great win for the Twins as they get a couple home runs from Miguel Sano and get another good outing out of their young pitcher, Steven Gonzalez. Steven has now pitched over 110 innings this year, only allowing eight home runs. He is really taking a foothold in this rotation. We'll continue on now with this little four game home and away split against the Cardinals. We have some late game drama. Runner at second base, one run game. Brian Pena, the batter, as the backup catcher gets the start. He's a good contact hitter though. One and one, pitch up, taken to right, down for a hit. But quickly it gets to the right fielder, and we can't run on that. To my surprise, this is where the Cardinals made a pitching change, despite the save not being blown yet. So Rosario comes in to run at first base, and now ex-Cardinal John Jay as the pitch is wild, and will tie the game on that at three. Escobar touches home, and now John Jay looks to put this game away. He flies into left, getting jammed on the inside pitch. Great catch by the third baseman deep into the outfield. But now Quinton Berry. Can players like Berry come off the bench to deliver late in games? Berry strikes out on the circle change, and the Twins cannot win it in the ninth, so we have extras at target field. In the 11th, Tyler Duffy in the game. And the second pitch of his day is hammered to center, down for a hit. And it ends up being a double as it gets past Jay into the wall. Duffy trying to keep the run from scoring. Randall Gritchick, strike two. There's a four-seam fastball that gets him looking. Can the Twins get out of trouble? Tommy Pham with two outs, swings at a fastball below the knees. But then gets a pitch to hit, line to center, down for a hit. And here comes the go-ahead run. Safe and the Cardinals lead going into the bottom of the 11th. They call on Brett Cecil to close it out as the Twins lead with Joe Maurer. He'll go on the first pitch and put a base hit into center field. Maurer has been a very reliable hitter recently and for most of this year. Now it's Yunel Escobar. And he'll get a pitch up, take it in the left field. Two on for Minnesota with nobody out, but they are near the bottom of their order. Can one of these hitters deliver? It's Jorge Polanco. He gets ahead 2-0. Pitch up, taken to left, and he is way underneath it. Polanco flies out, so now it's Jason Castro. One and one behind the knuckle curve. One and two. Fastball gets him for the second out. And so the game is on the line. John Jay, the former Cardinal, has a chance to blow the save of his former team. There's a sinker just outside. Jay, very selective as he gets ahead. Two and one. In the air to left field. Jay gives it a ride. And caught on the edge of the grass as the St. Louis Cardinals Defeat the Minnesota Twins in 11 innings. For a team that has kind of stumbled out of the gates in the second half, these are the games that you hope to win and start getting a string of victories together. That was not the case. But there was something that happened in this game that goes beyond just losing it in the 11th inning. I had no idea until I saw this. 
Miguel Sano suffered a torn shoulder in this game, and that's why Unel Escobar had that one-for-one -one line going into the 11th inning. So Miguel Sano is on the disabled list now. It said he would miss one to two months, and this is where I got worried about where our season is headed. Now, Sano could go on the disabled list for 60 days and return just ahead of the season's conclusion. So, I did put him on the 60-day disabled list. And when that happened, it now had a 2-3 to three month injury recovery time. So, I'm not sure if Miguel Sano could play again this year. And that leaves me a little unsure of where to go moving forward here in the second season of the series. We're just a week away from the trade deadline. Thankfully, I didn't make any decisions yet, but now I have to decide, are we going to go get a player, or are we going to sell, potentially? The success this year came out of nowhere, we're in the playoff hunt unexpectedly, and we have the pitching, it would seem, to get us to the postseason. But if we were already considering adding some offense before the Sano injury, you bet we're definitely considering it now if we hope to make the playoffs. Now, there isn't a player in our farm system that we can call up to save the day. The Twins are currently six games out of the Central, and in the wild card hunt, we are one of the top two teams. Replacing Sano at third is not an issue. You know Escobar can become the everyday third baseman, but how do we replace his power and the impact his bat brings to the lineup? Well, there are options on the trading block. Chris Davis is one of them in the final year of his contract with the A's. He would provide the necessary power off the bench, but it wouldn't be very cheap. I have gone to see what it would take to get him from Oakland and it would not be that much fun. I talked to Moonlight Swami, he suggested going for a player like Adam Duvall, who was already traded to the Rockies. I'm not sure if they'd want to really move him. There are other options perhaps, Cole Calhoun was one that I liked from the Angels but he's already been signed to a multi-year deal at $8 million a season, and I don't want to deal with somebody else's contract that bad. It would need to be a little bit cheaper than that or shorter. There are options on the Braves. Freddie Freeman, that'd be a huge move to make, but I'm not about to have another $20 million first baseman going into his 30s. We did that once. Matt Kemp. Well, the Braves traded for him to take on that salary from the Padres, and I'm not about to do the same for them. But they had one option I did like, and that was first baseman Pedro Alvarez. In the final year of his contract at age 30, perhaps a player we'd sign beyond this year. He has great power against righties. He would be another left-handed bat for our lineup, but now I think we need a right-handed bat. So he's an option. At 76 overall, C potential. There's also Eric Thames on the Brewers. Now, he is signed to a four-year deal, but it's extremely team-friendly, and we do need a first baseman beyond this year. So Thames would be a player that could help us now and in the future. So that's an interesting option to consider. I like Thames, I like Alvarez, and I like Chris Davis. I don't want to sacrifice too much in the present, but I am willing to make a move because this year has been good, and I want to see if we can make it to the postseason. We are 5-9 and nine since the All-Star break, and now is the time to make a decision. Are we playing for the playoffs, or are we not? I would like to see your feedback in the comment section on which player, if you think we should trade, which player do you think gives us the best situation to trade for? Now, I would be willing to give up some pitching prospects. Alberto Mejia is one who is like a 67 overall B potential. He was with the Major League team last year, didn't do great, kind of struggled in the minors as well, but has been better this season. We have a lot of pitching options now in our organization, and I think we have enough to potentially trade. I also think we have a lot of outfielders with Rosario, Kepler, Buxton, then you have like Granite and other players down in the minor leagues. Maybe a combination of an outfielder and a pitcher could get us a player that could make a difference. Now, I'll say right now, I'm very tempted to go get Chris Davis because he is a very good power hitter and we'd have the money to extend him after this year. But is that the right move for these twins to make? Your feedback will be big for this one. Let me know what you think down in the comment section. Please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all in the next episode of the Twins Franchise. Have a great day.